So the Elegoo Centauri Carbon is starting to land and it's taking the 3D print space by storm. This is not a Centauri Carbon. Elegoo won't return my calls. The $299 Core XY Bamboo Usurper is making waves on the scene. And it's why I believe if you currently or hope to sell 3D prints on the internet for money, you're gonna wanna take notice. Now, if you were alive and a money spender just five short years ago, then you're probably aware that inflation's kind of be a, a kind of a thing that same year bamboo lab exploded on the scene with the x1 through kickstarter at a thousand dollars that's equivalent to a shade over twelve hundred dollars in today's money for the centauri to enter the chat at 299 dollars if you would have gone back five years and reverse inflationed it uh, that would have been just a shade over 240 dollars and that makes the picture a lot more sort of alarming the performance of the machine remains to be seen but a giant company like elgu i'd imagine that they're not going to have some major fundamental flaw with these things before before shipping them out. But in my short time here in the space, it's very clear that prices are going down, performance is going up, things are getting a lot more user-friendly or basically idiot-proof, which is kind of why I'm here. But for the purposes of this bit, we're going to assume that the machine operates as intended one for one. Even if it doesn't, it sort of signals the path that printers are going down in price and up in performance. So how is that bad for a 3D print business? Very clearly, competition. It's not time for a sign. It's not time for a cosign. It's time for a tangent. Now, I started my business in late 2012. I was a smoker, wanted to quit, and so I got on the, that purple medication that made you want to quit smoking. Those made me want to have a self-inflicted dirt nap. So I got off of those and I got onto e-cigs. Back then the cool kids called them e-cigs. Vape wasn't a thing. I started making my own liquid and then I realized, hey, I could sell this on the internet for money at like a thousand percent markup. And then three years later, I bought a Lamborghini. Anyway, when I started wholesaling my liquids, I was often talking to other uh, operators, other retailers, trying to sling my sauce to them. Once I was talking to a would-be retailer close by, he told me where his shop was going in and I was aware of another larger vape company coming in that was gonna be putting their shop very close by. And I remember what he said, it's tattooed on my brain, cause I can never forget it. He said, that's okay, a little competition will be healthy. <laughs> That is heresy to me. In my view, competition is only ever good for the consumer. Now I know, I get it. Competition drives innovation. It drives prices down for the consumer. It's just good for uh, like moving humanity forward or whatever. For a business, we don't want competition. There's a reason big businesses want to be monopolies. But for a businessman, it's just a lot of extra work. I want it easy. I want easy money. And that's true for every business. You like working for your money? No, no one wants to work for their money. $299 machine hitting the market. It's going to open up an entirely new segment of budget oriented buyers or people who were just on the fence or waiting to get in or maybe have experience and didn't want to upgrade. Uh, a whole batch of new people is going to be coming in for a machine at that price. Stop. I know you're going to say, all those people aren't going to start 3D print businesses. No, of course they won't, but a percentage will. That's X percent more people slinging slinky dragons. That's X percent more people printing their Patreon subscribed models that a lot of people seem to print. X percent more people mimicking your work. That's X percent more people jamming up and driving the prices up on the different marketing lanes for slinging your 3D prints. Margins in the 3D print space are kind of actually comical in my experience. It seems that you really need some sort of edge over everybody else versus just 3D printing stuff, putting on an Etsy, and then calling it a day. In order to make it viable, you've got to go above and beyond what everybody else is willing to do. I've yet to see any successful operator, at least of the people who showcase what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, make it without doing something else in addition to just 3D printing and selling stuff on the internet. At least people making anything meaningful in terms of you know, money. Again, the people who hack it seem to go the extra mile, seem to do something in unison with the 3D print and selling. Other things like doing Amazon FBA, heavy marketing spend, making your own consumables, and of course, media. Now this isn't meant to be a doom and gloom scenario to cause you to run away from the space, not that I get off on that kind of thing, but it is a fair warning from someone with a little business experience like myself, uh, who also is in the sell 3D print on internet for money uh, space as well. So to put it most succinctly, I'll just say, Maybe stay aware and temper your expectations. So do you sell 3D prints on the internet and you see this new unit? This is it's not a, uh, this is not a Centauri Carbon. This is a Flash Forge. Uh, but do you see this new unit as something to heed and kind of be scared of and elevate your game above before all the new people start rushing in? Or is this just a big nothing burger? You've seen this a thousand times. You're always and forever going to be making sales just like you did during coronavirus. And you're going to be doing that forever and ever. Amen. Let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like to watch the Chronicles of me 
the 3D printing and selling thing on internet uh, sort of thing. I do a vlog style thing. I post regularly on this channel where I print various different things kind of all across the board and kind of put them on the internet to sell. Sometimes they sell, sometimes they don't. And I end up throwing them in the ocean if they don't. And that's more often than not the thing that happens. I don't think that plastic's going to affect a shark. The sea creatures are hungry. So like the video because it's the nice thing to do and subscribe for more content like this. I'm the Technicals. See you next time.